Greetings and welcome everyone. It's All You Can Geek Movie Cast, episode 594. I'm one of your hosts, Jim Gast, joined by Mike Sneedy. What's up? Corey Feinside. Yo. And Tony Korkanakis. Hello. Welcome, guys. Welcome, listeners and viewers, to 594 <laughs> of the Movie Cast. The pandemic is officially over. Marvel has declared that. Um, no, I, I have. I have Doctor Strange 2 is in the theaters, guys. Uh, you know, I, I think three of the four of us were able to see it. Um, so we're, we're going to do a spoiler cast post, you know, tonight. So if you're watching this on Twitch, which we're streaming live, Tuesday nights, 8 o'clock, welcome everybody. If you're watching, whatever, welcome. Uh, we'll be doing that tonight as well. So you can check out the um, a bonus round spoiler cast for Doctor Strange 2. But we will give our, uh, you know, spoiler-free impressions real quick on this podcast. Um, just kicking it off with what we've been up to. And then we'll get into numbers and stuff. But, uh, you know, I, I thought it was a fine film. I thought it was good. Um, I'm a little lower than, than Tony is. Uh, and I don't know how Corey <laughs> fell. So, good. Like, Tony, you loved it, right? You, you thought it was fantastic? I liked it a lot. I mean, uh, yeah. as a Sam Raimi fan to begin with, okay. <laughs> it was uh, Marvel giving Sam Raimi a bunch of money and said, hey, make us a, a movie based on, you know, magic horror. Like, and, yeah. I, I feel like they said, they said, can you do, like, spider-man with evil dead yeah you do that more and he said sure yeah that's exactly <laughs> what he did yeah yeah and uh so it was a lot more horrorish than i expected um mm -hmm. i i thought everything was fine i you know what it was was um i you know i i got caught up in the cameo craze right and i didn't it didn't affect my film score because the good thing was before cameo i craze what cameo craze are you talking about? i don't know i was just ready for like i was ready for like wolverine daredevil uh, daredevil deadpool uh, i was ready for like tons of cameos in this thing uh rewriting the marvel universe um but it was like as long as i check that like if you check that expectation people um you're fine go see the movie it's a very enjoyable film it's fun <laughs> and dark this expectation um, that nobody gave you <laughs> No, but there are people. I'm not the only one. It's like a hype thing. I hype myself. It's we don't Twitter. want to be you too get, get like, specific with what cameos. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just like. Spoiler free. No, I, I know. I'm just saying, like, just check the check the cameo expectations, and you're good. If you I went by just Marvel advertising, you'll be pleasantly surprised at things. Well, if you went by so. just Marvel advertising, no one would have expected, you know, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in the last movie, but everyone did because of the the leaks. So that yeah. was the unofficial marketing for that movie. It I was know. a big thing. I, so I'm, I'm I don't like know a, why you would expect it different this time. I'm at a seven five for this film. You know, the further I got away, I gave it an extra half point. I gave it a seven, I think, originally, and I was like, no, it's like, it's a it's a seven five. There's nothing too glaringly I could complain about. It's just it was it was good. So that's me. Uh, Tony, you loved it, and I want to hear Corey after that. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably give it eight and a half. I mean, I yeah. can't really complain about it. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think of the 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 most critique I can give it is that this is finally Marvel saying, if you want to continue watching and enjoying these movies, you need to keep up with the content. As in, if you did not watch WandaVision prior to this, yeah, you're gonna be really lost, like extremely lost. And I can see why um, that may have that is, uh, you know that is an aspect of things. Impacted, yeah. That definitely would be impact in some cinema yeah. score. So definitely check that out uh, if you guys are gonna go see this and you haven't seen it yet. Go see, go watch Wandavision on Disney Plus. It's a absolute, it's a great series and you know definitely is gonna enhance this movie. So, but yeah, but good, right? I mean, you just good action sequences. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Mike just said, "Oh hell with that." Uh, Corey, what were your impressions? Yeah, so I'm like a little. <laughs> confused or not confused but surprised by your reaction jim just because uh i didn't like first for one i was surprised i guess that it wasn't as dark as i thought because like when well, you initially heard this movie it's gonna be a horror straight up horror movie and yeah, like I mean, it's not i, I don't consider it a horror movie i think it's like got some horror elements uh in it but it's very much a marvel take on a horror film you know there's definitely i want to talk about it during the spoiler movie. cast but I, I would like to say that this was kind of like uh, uh, an unstoppable, you know, force kind of thing with uh, the villain, where it's just like, oh. Yeah, okay. I mean, it had that kind of, well, you know, that yeah, Jason we'll or that. Freddy or slash, like, <laughs> villain type of thing. And that's where I think the horror, horror elements, I guess, come from. But again, I, I thought it was going to go further than it did. But 
Um, just because I was like, yeah, we're going to do like this straight up horror thing, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh, wow, I guess they weren't. I but mean, it, it was it's Sam Raimi horror. Yeah, it's not like, you know, yeah. Saw. It's still, you know, it's 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 still it's, fun, fun horror. It's fun horror. Yeah, but it's also like pushing the boundaries of its rating, which is oh, sure it is. Extremely. Absolutely. It is definitely um, a hard. But yeah, no, I, I, I really liked, I really liked it. I was pleasantly surprised with what they did with the multiverse and and everything, and I, I, I really enjoyed. The, I uh, thought that aspect was fine. I mean, I just, yeah, we'll get into it in the podcast. But okay, <laughs> all right. Um, but anything I'm, else, I'm guys? Up there with Tony, I'd say, you know. You're an E5. All right. Yeah. I mean, the thing so is, I... I think if you're coming from No Way Home and you're going into this, they're different movies. They're like completely different movies. I think That's what this I think would have been, I think this would have been fantastic prior to Spider Man. I think it would have been like, I don't know. I just, with the emergence of the multiverse through that movie, I thought this was another, I mean, it gives you more details, but that's as far as I want to go here. So we'll talk about it. But all right. Um, other things, you know, I'm starting to watch um, more Picard, which is, probably the weakest um i'm in the middle here and it's kind of schlog right now so not very happy with what they did and i read like it doesn't get a lot better this season unfortunately so um but yeah so that's really it for me i mean i'm playing some games i had a busy weekend a lot of stuff going on so mike what have you been watching anything Mm, no not really just a few odd office reruns that's about it okay all right, uh, uh, Tony. Anything else, sir? Um, I forget if I mentioned on the podcast. There's this anime that just finished Aaron called um, <clears throat> "My Dress Up Darling." Strategy. What is that the one? No, you mentioned something else last week. I thought was it that one? Hmm. I don't know. I what thought you were talking that? about it last week. Did I switch? No, no. I'm just trying to think of what I could could have said last week. Um, but it was no. right up my alley. I don't know. Don't worry about it. Let's keep going. Yeah. Oh, oh. Uh, not compete. Yeah. Anyway, it's um like a modern, I don't know, slice of life, uh, coming of age. I don't know, like some weird teenage rom com anime where it's a uh, this uh, high school loser dude who's like so obsessed with these um uh antique dolls. I think they're called like um, Hina dolls or something like that. Because his grandfather makes them, and it's like something that he was obsessed with it as a kid. So growing up, that's all he did in his spare time. He's like focused on that. So he didn't really have like friends or anything like that. Uh, now he's in high school, and uh, he meets this uh, girl in his class. It's like cute, pretty, popular, outgoing, all that stuff, and whatever. And uh, she sees him using a sewing machine one day, and she's like, "You can use a sewing machine?" And he's like, "Uh, yeah." And uh, she asks him to make her a, or she asks him to make her a cosplay, because she's obsessed with like games and stuff like that. And that's the starting point. It just goes from like how he learns about all this like games, because again, he's like he's focused entirely on doll stuff, so he has no I'm idea. I'm introvert. Yeah, big super <laughs> introvert and stuff like that. And uh, it gets a little, yeah. I don't want to say raunchy, but it gets a little. It, it, it skirts the line of like, oh wow, you're allowed to show this kind of stuff on. Uh, <laughs> television in japan uh, and stuff like that but it's really funny and it's just like a feels good you know rom-com kind of thing so that's pretty much it oh Corey, i'm just been watching a little bit of anime i, I checked that out too because tony mentioned it a little while ago as well yeah so i thought it was pretty pretty funny it's definitely oh. one of those um like coming of age like you said but it's like it takes it takes a character and like opens his eyes to what's out there into the world and it's like uh, it just puts them in awkward situations and like funny scenarios, and then, um, but then yeah, like you said, it's optimistic and it's it's feel good moments and things like that. Yeah, yeah. and it kind of turns its head on some of the like the themes of like the girl being like oh super hot and like popular and you know too good for the common guy kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, so it was good. I also like started watching. I uh, went back and watched the uh, Rise of the Shield Hero again because the second season out. And I was like ah, oh, I'm just gonna like check out the first episode just to, to like you know i'll get back into the swing of things because i wanted to see what this second season was all about and i heard it was bad so then i was like oh, i'll just watch the first season again because <laughs> the first season is really yeah. good so yeah i did that cool all right let's get this is the point in the podcast where we uh give you guys awesome numbers for doctor strange and the multiverse of madness so uh just to rattle a few, few things off here of how good it was 187 
$1.4 million weekend. Uh, that's with three o'clock showings, though. They're really stretching this like three day weekend with midnights uh, now that they're at the three o'clock showing mm -hmm. on Thursdays now. But um, I like, thought I saw... said that one time, and you were like, "Wow, that's what they've been doing for years." And I was like, "Oh, okay, okay." It's no, like I didn't know it was the three o'clock. I thought you said. I know it started at six, but I never know it was like. Now we're on at three, and I went and saw this movie at nine o'clock in the morning on a Friday. When is their theater open at nine o'clock in the morning? <laughs> so. You know, and our, my theater was pretty full at nine o'clock in the morning. So, Dude, you know, the, 187 it, was impressive. It, it was insane. I went to the, uh, like a matinee showing on uh, Saturday and I've not seen the movie theater this crowded since pre-pandemic, like Avengers and Game Over. I was just like, holy shit. There was a line out the door. Yeah, I mean, like... there's there's so much hunger for this phase four stuff that we just haven't had. You know, and we're getting it finally. Thor, I think, is going to do banana. Like, Thor is going to go. I think is Thor's going to go crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I think Thor could beat easily two hundred be, over two hundred easily. Yeah, I think it could beat no, uh, no way home. Oh wait, what was it? What's the third one? Jesus Christ, no way home. Or, yeah, no way home. Yeah, yeah, no way home. Yeah, I think it really I could. So. Um, I don't. Think I, so. I just there's I don't know, man. I, I there's this Doctor Strange too, which you know it had some hype. Don't get me wrong, but Thor, Thor, I, I just think it's gonna draw. I think it's gonna draw. We'll see. So looks fun. There's Guardians of the Galaxy in the previews. I, I think it's gonna do good. Uh, that's really the only box office numbers to talk about. The bad guys at nine million. Sonic did six still, which is amazing because it comes out like next week. Um, so, but Doctor Strange, um, best debut ever for Sam Raimi. So congratulations to Sam Raimi, who's been uh, a, a pretty well-known director. He's done. He's not a failure of a director at all. He's just done some B movies like with a Evil Dead. I mean, with low budgets that have done very well, but never, never like you know triple A franchises. Um, you know, besides Spider Man, obviously. But it's been, it's pretty awesome. Like it, this movie came out and obviously with inflation, it, it, I don't know if it still beat Spider-Man opening, but mm. uh, it's Spider-Man 2, but I don't know how that works. It's yeah. a stupid discussion. But still, it's, it's very impressive and uh, it, it's really good. So congratulations to him. All right. And that's pretty much it for the box office. All right. We have a little bit of news here to get into and then we'll move into the game cast. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to start off with the saga of Ezra Miller, um, or the end of the saga, maybe. Who knows? Uh, I had to put this on here because we follow this news, and we, you know, at least two of us. Are, Corey, I don't know where you're at. Mike, I don't know where you're at. Are we ready to get him replaced, all of us? I, I don't really care. <laughs> I could need to be there. No. I could take it or leave it at this point. No... They need to go. I'm sorry. Yeah. You can't have somebody that's supposed to represent a superhero as your brand and continue Who's to employ fucking him. Just psycho. Yeah. He, I mean, they, they, they're just psycho. Too. Like they're just like getting people, they're hiring people, and they're just turning into like these weirdos and like bad yeah. people. And yeah. uh, he's uh, he, he can't be a face of one of your you know franchise characters yeah. if you want to build a, a a world like you're building with like Marvel's doing over there. Yeah, like, you don't see they want that you know, so Doctor badly. Strange going out and like beating people in the bar. So, I mean, they're they're gonna be trying to hire somebody for this big world building thing finally, which should have been done since day one. But, I mean, this is obviously one of the major replacements that it's a crazy because he's the kind of the guy who's going to be rebooting this universe with this movie, but they're going to kind of reboot him as well. I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, not from the movie, obviously. Yeah, Everything is done. Not it. Like, yeah. Everything's you done. Get a new, new character. You don't even need, like, if you want to, if you want to make, make a Barry, sure, make a Barry, but you can also make a Wally. You can make him whatever. You can do whatever you want, but you got to move on from the actor yeah. because he's not yep. going to represent your so, brand. It's been reported now multiple or from a, multiple a. multiple places now have been reporting that WB is considering replacing Ezra Miller uh, with options, different options actually. They're weighing different options. So just the fact that they're weighing options means as soon as this movie it's is over, it's, I, it's happened. Yeah, it's happened. I believe that's the end of it. They're gonna. I don't think they changed before because they don't need that. Maybe I don't know. Good press. Any press is good press. Is that maybe they'll do it before? But I don't think so. Um, no, but wait. you know, there's a couple of options. Uh, I guess there's a actor Dylan O'Brien who has been up for it apparently before and now he's he's actually up for nightwing but um i don't know so we'll see we'll see where that goes uh the other th side of things is marvel uh, and i'm sorry everybody that does the news for this week is dc and marvel news but that's what we got right now um is the disney plus series miss marvel uh it's coming obviously in june and uh there's <clears throat> been a lot of hearsay like there's been a lot of back and forth about kamala uh Kamala, Khan. Kamala Khan's uh, powers. Um, so and so, Kevin Feige actually came out finally and did an interview where he explained how 
the timing of the comic books, her powers fit for what they wanted in the comics, you know, for that universe. And this timing for them is different where they take inspiration of what that character is and they turn it into what they're moving forward with with their their Marvel universe because she's a major part of it. Um, and so they've kind of merged that into what they want to go with their their phase four plan. Essentially, that's paraphrasing everything, but that's basically yeah. what well, he had said. It looks like they're going more cosmic with it, yeah. which is what, you know, you got the Miss Marvel or um, Captain right. Marvel well, stuff. They, in there. Right. They Ms. want the, the stronger Captain Marvel connection there instead of, I believe in the comics, she's mm-hmm. an inhuman, right? Uh, well, I thought she uh, was in the game. Going through the terror <laughs> mist. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. the same stuff that makes the humans like the same stuff on Agent of Shield. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's becomes uh, on, right, right. Mist. But they classify that as inhuman. If you get your powers from the Terrigen mist, yes. you're, you're classified as inhuman. Yeah. So I can see them not wanting to do that because I mean, it really doesn't make sense for her to have such a strong tie to Captain Marvel. The other thing is too yeah. is like I, I get how like comic purists might be upset about that, but if you're gonna get upset by this from this by now, like. And you've seen, yeah. what, 30, 30 something comic book movies where things have been altered, changed, adapted. Like, it's like, really, this is the hill you want to die on? Like, I, I it's think... not like she's like such an ingrained character where it's like, this is, this is hearsay, you know? It's, it's I mean, just kind of like, I, I, I don't, you have the multiverse. I don't know if core powers, powers have been changed too much, though. Ever, yeah, Corey, in any of these Corey movies. Got a, Corey got it right, right there. You, Corey, you said the core, multiverse, right? I mean, this is, this is. The Marvel six one six. It's about everything forever now. No, this is this is their universe. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what they did. Yeah, yeah. This I mean, is their universe. Whatever universe you want to create, like you can have whatever background you want now. And nothing whatever. means anything. It's over. You get it never has in the comic. How many Christmas times have characters been killed and come back only to be killed again? <laughs> that's comic yeah, books. So? Nothing that's matters. You're right. It's nothing journey, matters, Mike. Like, nothing journey. matters. Not, it's, not it is the journey. It is the journey. Um. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm okay with this. Uh, I'm actually excited for this series. Um, I kind of don't know much about this character, just like Moon Knight. Um, but for some reason... Well, I know a little bit, thanks to the Avengers game, essentially, which might might be totally different. Yeah. I mean, uh, and I've read a little bit of her comic books. Like, just a couple, like, I think the first ten yeah. issues I've read. I mean, so, the, the thing is, my take of it, because I only have, like, limited... Um, uh, views on her, like, yeah, exposure to her and stuff like that. But my understanding is that... What, char- what people really like about this character is that uh, it, it's her actual character, she, not her powers. It's not like, oh, wow, her, her powers are so cool. That means she's yeah. awesome and stuff like that. It's like, no, she's a cool character because she exists in this universe. She was like a fangirl of superheroes and then became a superhero, and that, that's her relationship with heroes. And sometimes that gets complicated when she disagrees with people like, you know, um, Captain Marvel and stuff like that. So that that's the interesting part about her. It's not like, oh... Her fist can morph and be really big. It's like, oh well, no, man, that's like, who cares? There yeah. are things, though. She is a relatively new character. Right. She hasn't been around like 50 years like a lot of these other characters. And also, it's kind of a goofy power that's sort of it's uh, yeah. unassuming a little bit that kind of matches sort of her characterization, I would think. It's unassuming at first that she's basically like Mr. Fantastic. And then, like, you turn, you know, with a little creativity, like, she becomes a big asset so i could see why people are upset i mean I, you talk about all of the changes that these movies have done they really haven't changed core powers too often i mean yeah. hulk's weaker like, that's about it but like, like otherwise like deadpool the first time around <laughs> what deadpool the, the first, first time the, around? the bad the bad deadpool movie <laughs> Yeah, the one we shall not back, speak of. Back in, you know, back the, one, in the one where they 3? they talk they they took his mouth and shut it up. Yeah, did, did people did people like that? <laughs> no, but I'm saying it has happened before. That's a that's an example of them doing it too it's far. Not, it's not the MCU though. We were uh, we were talking about, you know, this is the first time they've really sort of changed uh, the core powers of one of their characters. I think. Uh, yeah. I mean, Wanda. Bef- prior to the new movie, you I could mean, argue that Wanda and Pietro, they're not they're not mutants. Sure, they're they're gifted. Yeah, they haven't. Yeah, I mean, they've done that before in this. So I don't know, but uh, we'll have to see how we'll it see. comes out. I think it's more like like how she's gained the powers. I guess. Like, yeah, because it looks to me like she pretty much has very similar powers. She does have similar powers, so we'll see. But that's in June. And I think that's actually it for the movie side of news today. 
Um, so, like again, we have a uh, game cast coming up. We have a spoiler cast coming up for Doctor Strange 2. So stay tuned for all of that stuff, guys. Uh, this is the end of the movie cast. Thanks for listening.